In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an HIK rig for a custom character model in Maya that can be used in Unity for gameplay or animation. This is not meant to be a rigging tutorial. It's a little more of an overview to show you how you could approach the process. Okay, so there's actually a couple of ways you can go about generating a rig for a custom model. Here I just said create skeleton, and that comes from a humanoid skeleton template that you can modify. And if you hit the little mirror icon here, it will try to copy each side so that they're equal. Um, this process works really well, or you can just create your own skeleton really depends on your experience level. But for us, I'm gonna just create my own. Now, since this isn't meant to be a rigging video, I'm going to skip over this and just jump into the actual rig that I've already created. There's nothing really that special going on. I laid out my bones, I've named them very specifically. And I, what I've done is I did keep go through and keyframe some things to make sure my weight painting was working. So I usually like to keyframe bones and joints to make sure that the character's weight, general weight painting works. It's not perfect, as you can see, there's some collisions, but that really doesn't matter because you will, I will be using the weight paint to drive the cloth. So first thing I'm gonna do is just clear off all the animation that I've got here and just delete all the animation off this character. Okay. So I didn't want to get too much into a rigging tutorial here, but this is the basics of the character rig. So the next thing you have to do when you're actually setting up an HIK rig, so we'll go in here. I've already done her, but if I wanted to create a new definition, what you can do with this character is we'll just go add a new character. You can see the definition has been lost. And essentially all you do is you just take, let's select the hips and you start assigning bones. It's really straightforward. This is the spine. Then you go in here and we're going to assign the rest of the spine bones. So you just move along. There's a whole bunch of tutorials on this process. So I would encourage you to check them out. Um, they kind of walk you through how to do this. It's pretty basic. It's not that hard. It's fairly self-explanatory. The only thing I, I suggest is that when you have multiple joints down the arm, you don't worry about them lining up with the arm. So let's go into the shoulder, for instance. I have this clavicle joint here and I'm just going to assign it at the base, and I don't go here and then assign this one. You actually move out and you go to the arm and assign this. And if you have multiple joints inside the arm, you go in here and you actually assign it up here. My thought initially was, well, I should make it match with where it is on the actual image, and that's not the case at all. You really just assign them in order, otherwise you're going to get errors. Okay, so now we're here. Anyways, you can make sure you tell it the mirroring should be on and then it, sh it sometimes duplicates well or copies over, but it doesn't work one of my own rigs. And maybe that's just because of the way things are named. I don't really know exactly, but essentially you go through and create the character definition. And then once you're done, so I'll go back to this character here. Once you're done and you've set up all your definitions and you've got your character all in place, use this one here. And I just do an auto generate rig because it actually serves my purposes very well. So what we'll get here is we'll get some automatic controls on this character. We'll get some really nice features that are quite handy. It's a mix between FK and IK that operates at the same time. You don't have to switch things. It's a pretty robust rig, and I actually really love posing this character. There's some tricky things that happen when you're trying to animate. Just you have to get your head around the way work, you work with this stuff because you don't have conventional roll joints and things like that, which some people don't like. I actually really enjoyed it once I got the hang of it, like moving in. If we go under the feet here, and I just lock their position and rotation. And if I want to create a foot roll, I can just pull the foot up like this. It's actually a really exciting way to work. So anyways, this is how you set up the basic rig. And once you've got this rig in place, we can get ready to export. Actually, let's group it at the world origin. So edit, we'll go group, and I'm just gonna change this. Let's go edit, reset settings, we'll go apply. So that's gonna apply at the origin. So now we have a group, and I'm just gonna name this GRP Deer Girl. There we go. So what I'm going to do is just select this character that we just finished grouping together. And I'm going to use the Maya game exporter. It's pretty straightforward, easy to use. I've already set up the folder that I'm going to be sending it to, but let's just go here and we will do it again. We're going to set it to our assets folder in Unity, and I'm going to send it to FBX models. And we'll just move it. Well, we'll put it in characters, I guess. So you can see there's already a couple of characters here. So that will go set. And I'm just going to call this Dear girl, HIK. Sometimes I use multiple kinds of rigs. I don't always use HIK rigs, but HIK rigs I've been having a better and better time with. Let's just double check our settings. This is all fine. I've got blend shapes turned off because I don't have any. So let's just go export. 
Also have you note that I have it enabled to view an FBX review, and that's a program that comes off the side. It's like a little app that allows you to check an FBX file without going into Unity. So it's something you have to download additionally, but it is pretty useful if you want to see how your files are working. So in the next video, we will import this file and start playing with it.